good architecture does have this great propensity to um, amplify social forces. Technology and place and culture are these very powerful operating forces. When I make public buildings, I'm compelled to kind of dissolve any sense of hierarchies which are disconcerting. That maybe comes from my background, being of multiple identities, so I'm sensitive to how those play out. The National Museum of African American History and Culture is probably the most significant project I've engaged in in my career so far and, and probably will be one of the defining projects, I'm sure. This is a museum where the container and the content are one. The museum's central silhouette is derived from a Yoruba capital head, a wooden column, which holds a porch in a shrine house. This triple-headed ziggurat was actually a beautiful way of encapsulating this universe of ideas. I have a deep interest in Africa and Africa's diaspora. When I look at abstractions from the continent, I'm trying to understand how abstraction was incredibly successful in unifying complex tribes and groups to create ideas about larger collective organizations. Culture is intrinsically connected to fabric, society being a woven textile, a system that's interconnected, and that the strength of the society is through that interconnectedness. And I'm much more interested in thinking about architecture through this notion of fabric, through interconnectedness, and through handing down of abstractions and interconnections. The Sugar Hill Project, where the rose embossing was not literally drawn, but was a vector drawing, which disappeared and appeared, depending on the way in which sunlight operated on it. And the reason for it was because the land that we were occupying was farmland. There were rose farms up there. Buildings can imbue within them narratives about geography or about people without being mimetic or figurative, but can use narrative to describe what that abstraction can be about. Public architecture dissolves and becomes less about form and becomes more about scalelessness and interaction. And private architecture increasingly becomes about havens and moments. So maybe from that you can imagine what my ideal campus might be. I think that the campus is a very interesting question. I think it asks the campus to absolutely weld itself with the public life of the community. The MIT campus is interesting. That original building is really powerful for students. The architecture of that building and its history and its layering of other people who have been inspired within that environment. The architecture can dissolve itself by dismantling certain formal commercial and civic ideas which are to do with sealed palaces of information to becoming more like markets. The notion of a place of exchange becomes maybe a very interesting model for a place of education and learning. It's not so much about the quantity of the books anymore because actually that can be gotten through the internet. But the quality of the space as a gathering, edifying space is actually now very critical because as creatures of habit and pattern, we actually like the idea of places of stimulation. I think in our century, in the 21st century, architecture is about having the tools which give you the data, but constantly reapplying the tools in very precise ways which creates new conditions which amplify and help society.